He also said a beautiful word. Those who follow vanity and lies forsake their own mercy. Verse 8. Is this a prayer or a proclamation of truth? All of the above is told in a direct speech to our Lord, while we aren't sure who Jonah is speaking to in this sentence. Is he talking to God? He certainly is not going to teach God. Is Jonah talking to himself? Or is he talking to us so we can learn from him through the generations? Sometimes in prayer, the Holy Spirit reveals to a person a truth that had been previously hidden from him. Jonah, you made a mistake and your heart believed the lies. You pursued wrong ideas. The thought that God belongs to the Jews only is wrong. Vanity and lies. That's why you forsook your own mercy. The thought that these people do not deserve his mercy is wrong. That's why you forsook your own mercy. The thought that you may disappear from the eyes of God is wrong. That's why you forsook your own mercy. The thought that you can die and rest is wrong. Death is not rest for the unrepentant. That's why you forsook your own mercy. In prayer, Jonah discovered the truth. That is, whoever follows the wrongful path will surely have his blessings taken away. It's like Jonah was saying, I was a prophet, I was chosen, I was your servant, so why didn't I obey you? You would have surely come along if I'd obeyed, but all this was vanity and lies, which led me to forsake my own mercy. This often happens to us. A person would be serving God, then some job will come his way, taking him away from the ministry. Vanity and lies. He forsook his blessing. He had the blessing of the ministry and the blessing of prayer, and then left all that for a few more bucks in our pockets. Those who follow vanity and lies forsake their own mercy. If a person is attracted by friends in all the pleasures of life and cares for them over the time, cares for them over prayer, over the time of prayer, he'd surely be forsaking his own mercy. Vanity and lies. Okay, verse 9. But I, meaning repentance, O oh God, I cannot leave my mercy and blessing again, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. So Jonah, you are going to sacrifice too? You're going to get out of the whale, reach the temple and sacrifice? Did anybody make you a promise? Jonah says, I'm sure of it. So long as I've cried out, the whale has to open its mouth, and I must get out of here and stand in front of the altar and sacrifice as I used to do. That's just how much Jonah trusted the Lord. He said he'll stand in front of the altar and thank God and offer a sacrifice. Then he ended with a beautiful word in verse 9, Salvation is of the Lord, meaning, I am waiting for you, Lord. I prayed for you. The matter is in your hands now. I'm sure it will be resolved. So through prayer, do we learn a lesson or not? Sometimes prayer will remain hot until we reach the lesson. What is the lesson? In this case, it is those who follow vanity and lies forsake their own mercy, as it's said in verse 8. The whale won't open its mouth unless you say this sentence, coming from both your mind and your heart, so you don't do it again. Once Jonah understood the lesson, God commanded the whale to open its mouth. Do you now see how valuable your blessing is? The blessing of the church, of the Eucharist, of service, of people's affection? Would you lose that again? Did you learn how to say thank you? You have now lived tougher days than the days in which you were not grateful. Did you learn that salvation is only from our Lord? Meaning, Nobody can save you except our Lord. You now know that you should thank our Lord at all times. The prayer ended, so the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Jonah understood the lesson, the grace that left him returned, and Jonah returned to God, and glory be to God forever. Amen.